All right. How are <laughs> you? That's a funny face whenever you hear know. It does that little little weird pause <laughs> there. So are you ready for a hurricane or tornadoes today? Listen, coming from South Florida, um, mm -hmm. I get losing power will stink because it's very cold, but I don't really stress about it. Yeah, I don't um, really stress about it either in general. And then maybe it's my coastal vibes now. I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> a little bit of rain is all fine. So, yeah, so the anyway. schools are shut down and all the things. So um, they're not shut down. They're getting out early. Yeah. So, so for anybody that watches this at a later date or some other time, um, it is January 9th and um, North Carolina shuts down at any consideration or thought of bad weather. So it's one of those days, but we're still working. We got up, we made our calls this morning. We're doing all the things we did. Today was this day that you didn't want to do it, right? You hear all the time, don't do the things on the days you want to, because you would never mm -hmm. want to do it. Yeah. And we had some good conversations, the agents. We did. We, yeah. did. we all collectively agree. It's something that we are glad we do it. We glad, we're glad that we are doing it together. None of us love it, but we're glad that we're doing it. <laughs> Which is an amazing segue. I don't even think you meant to do that, Pam. A great segue in what we're talking about today, right? Some three essential things for your business. Yeah. And that first one was that dang calendar. Right? Yeah, this is very true. So this is probably a non-sexy topic, but um, just around probably this. it is not a non. It is, <laughs> but it's all good. But it's the organization, right? It's the systems, it's the processes, it's all those things to kind of keep your your business organized and efficient. Um, so that you can make the most out of it. It's so easy to not do the things that we don't want to do. So, um, but putting systems processes and some efficiencies in place, it really, it really helps to, to get that done. So yeah, let's talk about calendars. I think you and I have really been in deep in our calendars the last week or so. So what's we have time? been in deep. We talked about, was that last week or the week before? Okay. Yay. We have all of our goals. We have all of our dreams, all of our aspirations for 2024. Now what? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and how do you break that down? And so then you've got the year and then we talk about, you have your quarter, but your quarter is still 90 days. That's a lot of days. Um, so how do you move that needle forward? So 90 days from today, you're looking at what you've accomplished and you're like, okay, I accomplished that. And it starts with that daily calendar. And it really starts with just looking at your week. Um, and I think what I have learned and got better at is being realistic right. with my calendar. Yeah. So I'll Sunday and I look at everything and I plug all these things in. But then I don't plug in that my daughter has a basketball game that mm -hmm. I'm not going to miss and the travel time to the basketball game. And then when I get home making dinner, so am I really going to have the energy when I need to do something that night. If I think I'm going to, you know, work after hours or whatever that I want to work on and that sort of thing. So really encourage to put in those non-negotiables. Mm -hmm. We are so afraid to put in non-negotiables in our calendar and it's a detriment, right? Um, when I first started in real estate, I missed so many soccer games mm -hmm. and I needed to at that moment in my business because I was just a massive build mode. Yeah. And I had a conversation with my kids, but I'm kind of back in building phase again, but Abby's a senior and it's a non-negotiable. I'm not missing her, her last season of basketball. And so I'm yeah. going to, I'm going to fill those in. Yeah. That, that hits home. Um, when I started capital to coast, Olivia was in her senior year in high school. She was still in Raleigh. So same thing. I was trying to go back and forth, but I, I don't think I missed a single game because I just, there's no business that's more important than that, um, mm -hmm. truly. And so I didn't want to miss those moments as well. But it really does start off with if you are in command of your calendar and you can control it, and then you you know how to plan around it. And you do know mm -hmm. when those time blocks are. So you don't say accidentally yes to someone and then have that oh shit moment later down the road of I'm going to disappoint someone, right? It's either going to be my client or my kid or my family, whatever it is. And so, um, but knowing like being so good with your calendar, like, Nope, sorry, can't, I've got another appointment that during that time, they don't know mm -mm. what you have. Um, not that we want a lot of people, but you know, um, you want everybody to feel special, but there's some things that are non-negotiable for sure. A hundred percent. And then yesterday I did a silly story, um, on Instagram because it was like, I had Monday planned. It was good to go. But by 9.45, I'm like, what has happened to my morning? Is what, what is going on? It can be that way, right? Mm -hmm. What I was supposed to do, there were things out of my control. But then I had to be like, okay, Mackenzie, but you still know that these three things 
<coughs> want to get done for the day? What are your three priorities, right? And so I had to kind of go back, um, restructure my afternoon. So I did not not do those three things. I just had to figure out where I was going to put them in in my afternoon schedule or my evening schedule to be able to um, <clears throat> to get them done. So I think that's something to um, to think about is be like, oh, the day got away from me. I'll do it tomorrow. But you've already, you should have, or well, not should have, hopefully you've already scheduled your Tuesday. So where are you putting that into it? Yeah. I mean, I'm glad you brought up the whole priority thing too. Um, I mean, Sunday, I spent probably an inordinate amount of time on planning my week. Um, but I, I love the process of it. Like I went back to the priorities of how I wanted to grow my business, like what three buckets I had that were the basis of everything, like social media, farming, and referrals were my three buckets for growing the business. And so how do I then take those priorities and then put action items in my calendar to actually make that happen? Then I took it another step further. It's like one thing to say social media. Well, what the hell does that mean? Mm -hmm. If you don't tell yourself when to do what, then it still is not planned appropriately. So I, I made sure all of my priorities were in check. If I was adding a task, did it actually meet what I needed it to do to grow my business? I was double checking that and then just kind of filled it in my calendar. And the beautiful thing about yesterday was, is I had some ideas, right? I'm like, well, I need to do this and I want to do that. So I just added it to some time blocking for next week. Mm -hmm. So I'm already mentally kind of preparing those priorities again, that are alignment with those three buckets and then we'll move forward there too. But it felt good. Like it mm -hmm. felt good Sunday. Cause I was like, okay, there's no, like, what am I going to do when I get into the office on Monday? It's lined up. It's just execution at that point. I've done all the planning and preparation for it. And yesterday felt pretty good too. Now I wasn't hundred percent perfect. So I would love to talk about that too. Like mm -hmm. when do you let yourself off the hook and say, that was a pretty damn good day. It wasn't perfect, but it was pretty good. You know? Um, yeah. I, that's how I installed the three things, right? I've got this mm -hmm. notebook and it's like the three tasks that must absolutely get done today. So as long as I get those three tasks done, check. And those three tasks though go into my buckets. Do they go into what I am trying to accomplish? It, you know, the task can't be, I want it to be to get my toes done. <laughs> and that's great if it's in my schedule, but I try not to add that into, unless it's a personal day, right? Yeah. And it's something that we can, um, and that sort of thing. But what really helped me was to, um, to really write out what has to be done. Mm -hmm. And it's, this is kind of a side note. And it just kind of happened. I actually was uh, talking to an agent this morning and um, a little bit of a defeated attitude uh, just about what all we could talk about is what she didn't accomplish. Mm. All she could talk about, what she did not do. And I just looked at her and I just, I mean, I felt the energy, right? And I just said, okay, time out. Just one second. <laughs> I was like, can we talk about the three things that you did do in the last night? Yeah, years? let's take a little good inventory. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure you just got something under contract. I'm pretty sure this, this, and this. And mind you, she has a four and two-year-old. <laughs> um, so it's just kind of, um, I don't know, dang, you know, celebrate anyone. We do not, this is not perfection. 65 no. to 80%, I'm good to go. Well, that's and that I kind of wanted to talk about that a little bit too because I was very aware when I sent my calendar to the folks on our team too. I knew that there was someone that was going to go, "Holy shit, <laughs> that number one looks like a lot, and it looks unattainable." And then you can start tell you can start beating yourself up when you're not a hundred percent on things too. So. I think it's great for the plan. And I'm not saying if you get 25%, you're like, well, that was a great day and pat yourself on the back and move on. That's not it at all. But this pursuit of perfection sometimes is not necessarily uh, mentally healthy either, you know, but as long as I'm hitting my priorities, right, the most important things um, and that if a little bit falls out and I've got to move it to tomorrow or next week, then maybe that's okay too. So 100%, maybe. like we said today, after our calls, we showed up. So it yeah. was a win. We showed up in this weather. We were all on Zoom or in the office and whatever else happened, happened. It won't pretty, but we got it done. It was not pretty. <laughs> all right. So calendar, 
if any, and if anybody wants like a copy of our calendar or our priorities that we're talking about too, just let us know. It ain't perfection again, but if it's helpful to help you just kind of visually see what that looks like, just reach out to one of us. I'm sure. Yeah. Pamela, about. I don't know if anybody needs to see what's in our head on, on a piece of well, paper. You know what? That is true. <laughs> <laughs> that might be scarier than helpful. <laughs> but if you want to go on the wild side, you let us. <laughs> I'll give you the abbreviated version <laughs> yeah. if you ask for it. Had to, like, she had to pare one of my emails down. She's like, girl, I ain't nobody going to read that. <laughs> and I love me a good email. I was like, nope. A lot. What I say? I love you. This is too much. <laughs> <laughs> she did. Get someone in your life that speaks real to you because I needed that. I was like, you're 100% right. I was, and I was aware of it when I sent it. I was like, I think it's too much. I'm it's reading it sweating and I love the <laughs> calendar. I'm like, nope, we're going to scare them away. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it works for me. A hundred percent. It's all good. But, right, <laughs> I get it. No, I'm just, I'm, you know, laughing at myself a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So t what's one other thing uh, as far as, you know, efficiencies for the business too? So another efficiency that just, it, it's just, it's, it's a game changer and it's our CRM. And I know people just, and I don't care if your CRM is a, is a notebook paper with people on a list of hot and cold and you have a T chart and you just, I don't care what your CRM is, but just a way to manage your data. Because if not, you have no idea what to do. Um, and it is just a game changer to go in there and this is my task and this is what I'm doing. This is the last thing I said, this last thing I emailed, texted and or called. Because what we find is if you don't have that, then you just don't go to it because you're like, I don't know where I ended up. I don't know what happened the last time. So I'm not going to call or I'm not going to text or I'm not going to email or I'm bothering them or whatever the case may be. And um, it's just whatever your system is that works for you <laughs> to manage any type of conversation that you're having to build your real estate business. I mean, I, I cannot stress enough. Um, so an independent agent listening to this, it does not have to be fancy. It does not have to be expensive at all, but just do yourself a favor because what's, I can't think of anything more frustrating for me is if I do show up for myself, I do make my calls, I do all the work and then I'm haphazard with the information. And then I did all that work. I showed up, I did the hard stuff. I ate the frog and then I have nothing to show for it right? Because I don't know what to do next. And so that would just be, that would be defeating to me. I'd be like, peace out. I'm not doing this. It sucks. <laughs> it does Making suck. Yeah. doesn't work. Yeah. Um, so I just can't stress enough for efficiency in your business is managing the conversations that you're having, however you want to do that. I love that too. And I think being intentional with your, your finish of a conversation with somebody on the phone, especially if it's not like a friend, you know, it's a lead, so you're still working on kind of building that relationship and rapport is what's the follow up and having some type of agreement with someone, you know, what are our next steps when we get off the phone today? Um, if it's okay with you, I'll call you back in two weeks or whatever that month is. And then going into whatever system you have, whether it's a CRM or a calendar and just write down that note to, to speak with that someone. What I love about the CRMs is it prompts you as long as you tell it what to do or you have an automated plan that tells you what to do, then all you have to do is just log in and then, you know, you know, who are the calls today? It, it will help you. It will tell you. Absolutely. For me, there's nothing worse of if I haven't talked to someone in a while, then I get in my head and I'm like, oh, God, I dropped the ball on that person. I, I probably should have called him a month ago and I haven't. And then you have guilt and then you tell yourself, well, I'll just put them on next week's list because <laughs> I don't want to do that work. But the problem was, is that I didn't have a good enough plan for follow up to begin with. So don't you know, just get ahead of it. Absolutely. And today um, made a connection and she was rushing off the phone and she, she just said, you know, can you call me later? So I didn't say yes. OK. I said, what time? Mm -hmm. And she said four. I said, great. So I in my phone, I have set a timer for four o'clock to call her back because I'll forget. So if okay. you think you're going to remember, mm -hmm. it's not an age thing. We're not going to yeah. remember. Too Real much going estate happens. Exactly. <laughs> so even if I'm in my car, my timer is going to go off and I'm going to be able to call her and just be like, I'm calling you back like I said I would. Mm -hmm. And that just starts a conversation. Um, yeah. I'm with her. So we'll kind of see. But And then the other thing, if you're watching this and maybe you have a small team or you have a team um, 
Pam and I talked about a few weeks ago about working in your genius. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm love. Tell me what to do and I will do it. Do not tell me how to create what to do to do it. And so <clears throat> we went even a little bit deeper into um, hiring a company that created automations for us and created those um, reminders, right, mm -hmm. of things to do. So we didn't have to be thinking of something to do every time or say until we were able to get them on the phone and make it a little bit more personal. So I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about that. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, I think the challenge is <clears throat> I chose to go with a company for a CRM called Sierra, and I love <coughs> able to customize so much. I mean, you can customize your website, um, you can customize your CRM quite a bit, um, and there's there's a lot of things you can do with it. But what it did not have already built in were auto drip campaigns and kind of that library. And let's be honest, it is not my sweet spot. Could I sit in craft every text message and email on an auto campaign yes but that so, sounds like absolute hell on earth to me um, <laughs> and it's not a good use of my time it's not my sweet spot and i'm better just talking to people and having those conversations and not on that back side of text so fortunately for sierra they have a couple of partners they work with um, we are working with blue door um, travis wade and he has all of these action plans. He has the, the auto drip campaigns and they, it just, it's, and he will craft it however we want it too, which is great. This is his sweet spot. God bless him. Um, he loves doing all of this and knows the technology behind it. So I think one learning piece from all of this is building is if it's not something that you're good at, don't necessarily waste the time to do it. Cause are you going to do it well enough? Or does it make sense to partner with someone that it is their passion and allow them to help you build your system out better? So ours is not perfect. There's still some tweaks that we want to do, but um, it has saved a, a, a crazy amount of time and effort. And I think it's a pretty good little plan, too. Yeah, because, you know, as you're starting out, um, independent agent, small team, new team, whatever it is, it's hard to invest in some things, right? <clears throat> You're really thinking about though, what is so this felt like a really good use of investment back into the company? Uh, <clears throat> because as they're following up with people on the back end, we're out in front of, of clients who are ready. Yeah. And so we're yeah. almost working, we're in two different places at once, mm -hmm. which is, um, which is kind of nice. Yeah, so, for sure. Yeah. And there's all different types of companies. He's actually very affordable too. So mm -hmm. um, oh, those companies are out there just, uh, reach out to them. Got to weed through. There's so many emails we get. Good Lord. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it's funny, like remembering KB Core and how that's such a powerful system, but in and of itself, it was overwhelming. And mm -hmm. so making that decision to move away from KB Core is like, need it simple, easy, that it works. But honestly, could have hired somebody probably for KB Core and would have been in a much better position ultimately. So hire people if you need it. Absolutely. Don't be afraid to invest in yourself and your business. That's it. <clears throat> Just be smart. Uh, right. <laughs> and you might make mistakes. We should probably do a whole thing on that. <laughs> Willing forward with Pam and McKenzie. <laughs> <laughs> I like it because I think that's part of it is with agents. Like you had a conversation with an agent um, this morning too around just being able to take some chance and some risks, some calculated chances mm -hmm. and risks. And so not everything's going to work out and be perfect, but that's okay. That's how you learn. Like rip mm -hmm. the bandaid off, learn fast, learn hard, move on. So yeah. hundred percent. Cool. All right. So the third thing that we thought that is really kind of essential that goes with you've planned your calendar. So what the heck are you doing in your calendar? Hopefully we are doing some follow-up and outbounding and all the things with, um, with having real estate conversations, right, mm -hmm. in our CRM, it's what is that um, repeatable process, mm -hmm. right? And how do we figure out a way to create repeatable repeatable processes so that we're not using brain space for some basic stuff? So what does that mean? That means that I've listed a home before, right? Um, but listing a home with capital to coast and going, okay, what is our process? What are our steps? Mm -hmm. um, we have our transaction coordinator. Um, what does it look like on the back end? Who's doing what? And so it's been kind of 
fun. I know that sounds weird, a weird kind of fun. But so as I'm listing this home, it's like, okay, what was step one? What was step two? What was step three? What was step four? So number one, I do that for me because then I can open up that document. I always have it, literally can have it, can print out something for each listing and just check it off. Even if you've done a hundred listings, it takes up headspace that you don't, did I do that? Wait a minute. When did I order the photographer? When, when did I do this? Then bigger team, you might have people to do it for you and that's awesome. Right now, that's not um, where we are. So, and I'm also doing it for our agents, right? So, I have another agent on our team who's going to list a home, and she was like, "Okay, I got to think about everything." I'm like, "I got you." As I'm listing this home, I'm writing out a process. It's literally a Google document. Don't make it fancy. You can't put into Jet GPT and say, "Please create this as procedures <laughs> and processes," and it'll do that for you too. And then it's literally there. So now it's like, "Okay, great. I got my listing agreement signed. What's next?" Mm -hmm. um, and it just it eliminates doubt. Um, did I do that? And that sort of thing. So we're trying to be very intentional as we build to build the processes along with us, not build and then be like, wait, how do we do that? <laughs> and then have to go backwards. Well, I, to add to that too, is sometimes I think as a team leader, you sometimes can have fear to add people onto your team because you don't have enough systems and processes. Mm -hmm. And it means you have to then slow down to then help someone um, with their business moving forward. And that is, that is such a limiting uh, side to the business, unless you take the time to slow down when we have these opportunities, right. To build those, to build those processes out a little bit more. And that's just being honest. There've been times where I've been like, Oh, I don't know if I want to bring on someone new, even though I would love to have them in the business, but I don't know if I'm the right person for them right now because I haven't slowed down enough to build those processes out. So another reason why it's great to partner with people though is to to help with some of these little pieces as well. So that's such a yes, that's such a, a great point that you made. It's just putting a little bit of time into it now mm -hmm. is gonna help in the future, right? And you might not know when, but you just know. Um you just know that you're going to need it. So really writing those out and having and be like, is this how we want to do this? Is this the most, because then I'm looking like, well, is that efficient? Well, is that how I should have done that? That was right. dumb. I should be doing three before I do four and four before or whatever the case right. may be. And just kind of looking at that. And then you, and you just, you have it and be like, oh, I've never listened. I'm getting ready to listen to them. Okay, great. Here's the process and how we do that. So you open this if you have any questions and let me know. I think it's great, even for individual agents too. Now, no matter where you are, if you're a team leader of a big team, small team, or an individual agent, it's nice to have all those things calculated down because you do want to scale no matter where you are in your business. Maybe you're selling 15 homes, you know, this year, but maybe you want to sell 50 homes next, you know, you're going to have to have some systems and processes in order to help you kind of move that forward because you'll get busy and you'll forget shit. Well, and, and how yeah. great to be able to be like, you hire, you finally ready to hire your first assistant and be like, hey, right. this is what I do. This is what I do. And you don't yeah. have to slow down because Lord knows we don't like to slow down. No, 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 no. I know. <laughs> I'm talking to Pam. I'm not talking to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she is because I am hard to slow down sometimes. I just want to go, 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 go. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, no, it's, I think it's, I think it's good to just write down this process. So I don't want people to think it's just about a team, but I think for individual agents, it could be absolutely crucial for your point. Who's going to be the first person that you hire someone to help dig you out of this mess. And they're going to want to see where exactly you are, how you do so they can integrate in your business really quickly. And, and you don't lose steam, that you're able to move, you know, faster, harder because you've got a process. Well, and I think it's a, it's a mistake that maybe some agents do. I've never been independent totally on my own, but in talking with other agents, it's just like they're flying by the seat of their pants all the time. And I'm just um, I'm like, if you just put a couple of things in place, you know, mm -hmm. like your friends, like, okay, great. New buyer. Here's my checklist. Okay, great. New seller. Here's my checklist. Okay, great. Here's a closing. Here's my checklist. And then it just kind of keeps you systematic until you are ready to have that leverage time and help. Um, yeah. If you ever are or whatever. So. Well, thank you so yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. I cut you off. Did you no. have something brilliant? Okay. No, I do not. All right. So to wrap it up, because that's what I like to do and make sure uh -huh. that this thing we're bringing a minute or two, I have no idea, <laughs> is we started the year. Yay. We've got our goals. And then we're like, oh, shit. What do we do now that we have our goals to now? How do we continue to meet our goals? I guess mm -hmm. is what I'm saying. Right. And so just check in with your calendar, check in weekly with it. Don't feel like if it didn't work this week that you have to do the same thing next week, be it tweaking it. Don't get to a place where you're doing it because you have to. And then four weeks down the road, you're just 
irritated and pissed and then you just throw it out the door, right? So just constantly be very aware and tweaking it and that kind of stuff and be nice to yourself. Be nice to yourself. Um, if you're going to do the work to talk to people and to go to open houses and to, to purchase leads or to call your sphere of influence, take some notes, you know, give yourself credit for all that work. So when they are ready to buy or sell that they're going to, um, they're going to reach out to you and you're going to be top of mind for them and CRM and whatever is that you want to do for your CRM and the sexy word of procedure and processes. <laughs> how the hell are you going to get this buyer under contract and how the hell are you going to get this listing on to the MLS? Thinking about really how you do it. Um, you know, what, what is the simplest way to do it? And Pam and I don't have it all figured out, but we've got some pretty good, we've got some good lay work down. So we would love just to, you don't even know where to start. Um, just hit us up because we can kind of at least tell you maybe where to start and don't think you have to write or build Rome in a day. That's what no. I'm reminded of. Monica daily reminds me, Mackenzie, Rome is not built in a day. I'm like, well, well let's see if I can build Capitol Coast in a day. <laughs> yes. We are in the trenches though, for sure. So if people are, are, are kind of exploring these, like, how do I grow, you know, um, call us. I, I think we'd love to just kind of chat and see what other people are doing too, because maybe we can learn some other ways to do things that are even better than what we're doing now. So just, um, yeah, reach out. Love it. 100%. All right, Pamela, on this rainy day, um, you stay safe. Hopefully the uh, sound doesn't come up to your backyard. I hope not. Um, it's a little high today, but yes, fingers crossed. 100%. 100%. Stay safe, right. my dear. Feel better. Right. Talk to you soon. Right. I know. Sorry for the coughing and the nose and all the things. Oh, good. Tis the season. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye.